wait, remember, ah, Real Monsters? It's one of those classic Nickelodeon shows coming from Klasky Chupo, the studio behind the Rugrats and the future long list of other shows shortly after, like the Wild Thornberries, Rocket Power, and As Told by Ginger. Aside from being known for having odd and different character designs across their library of shows, ah, Real Monsters, okay, I won't do that all the time, may just take the urinal cake for that yet. As the title states, the show is about monsters, real monsters, ones that are supposed to make humans scream. This was a show that I grew up with and came to love at the time thanks to just how unsettling it can be. Not for it being overly scary, but just looking at the character of Crumb here and just being confused as to what am I looking at? While Ah Real Monsters may not be remembered for being the best cartoon to come from the powerhouse line of Nickelodeon classics, it does serve as a great look back to creative ideas that cartoons can really be anything, and you can find an attachment to good characters regardless if they're whatever Crumb is. So with it being the perfect time of year, I thought it would be fun to look back on the show. What made it tick and what made it ick. Don't worry, I won't quit my day job. For now, let's jump into Ah! Real Monsters. <laughs> Funny enough, Ah! Real Monsters serves as a classroom-based comedy where our three main characters, Ickis, Oblina, and Crumb, attend a special underground school for monsters of all shapes and sizes to learn how to properly scare humans when they have to head up to the surface to do so as their school assignments. All ran by Gromble, the headmaster who also makes me question, what am I looking at? But nevertheless, that's the base premise of the show. It's simple and allows enough room to be played around in for a wide variety of adventures. For our main three, they are quite the interesting bunch. Ickis, voiced by Charlie Adler, has big shoes to fill, and I don't just mean because he has large feet, I mean because he is the son of the school's best student. He struggles with being a leader that he is completely capable of being, as he isn't the most brave when it comes to getting the job done or being involved in certain situations, leading to him often slacking off from his responsibilities with school, as he much rather just have fun with his friends. When it comes to getting the scares out of people, he can grow in size to appear menacing, you know, when he can find the courage to do so, that is. Obli Lena, voiced by Christine Cavanaugh, is the rich kid in the group, having a very prim and proper way of speaking and presenting herself when dealing with others and doing her schoolwork. It's funny to see these traits given to what is, well, a monster. While she is clearly the best student currently in the school, that doesn't mean she can't get wrapped up in a bunch of shenanigans stemming from her two best pals. As far as scaring goes, she has a knack for shape-shifting and pulling her insides out, so don't eat your lunch while watching this show because Oblina might just show you exactly where your food goes to digest. To round out the group, there is Crumb, voiced by David Eccles, and he's, well, the only way I can describe him as is a hairy human meatball, that if they were to do a handstand, that nose would certainly look like something else. He also holds his own eyeballs within his hands, and that seems to be such a living nightmare to have to deal with. Surely they must get infected all the time. He's, he's just Crumb, okay? He's just fun to have around while you try and decipher everything that defines him. He may come off as not so bright, but as we get to know him, we come to find find out that he's a pretty smart monster, and tends to hide the fact that he is smarter than he appears. His armpits can radiate an awful smell that aids him in his scaring endeavors. Together, these three can go on plenty of adventures that constantly leave them almost caught by the public, which could expose the existence of monsters. <laughs> Running from October of 1994 until November of 1997, Ah! Real Monsters lasted for four seasons totaling 52 episodes. Much like how I spoke about in my Rocket Power video and how that show was largely inspired by their kids, Garver Chupo and Arlene Klasky would find that same reasoning here where at one point in their lives, their kids were into monsters. So when Nickelodeon asked for what else they have for them after the Rugrats became a hit as one of the first three Nicktoons, Garver Chupo along with Peter Gaffney, who also worked on the Rugrats, came together and created Ah! Real Monsters monsters, and it was given the go-ahead to turn into a full series once they saw the sketches of what the monsters would look like. They were odd and different, but they weren't too horrifying, aside from Crumb, to look at, so that it could work fine for a kid's cartoon. They all have a unique look to them, and were partly inspired from the visual look of the animated Beatles film Yellow Submarine. But rather than just be as colorful as that film, the tones needed to be more muted. It needed to feel like both worlds were a dump, whether it was the area the monsters reside in underneath the actual dump, or the world above 
love, putting a reflection of ourselves as to who the real monsters could be. Okay, it's not that deep, but the way the show was designed made for a creepy and dilapidated feeling. But to the monsters and people in this world, it's their everyday life. They pay it no mind. The other main character they constantly have to deal with is Gromble, voiced by Greg Berger. He runs everything underneath the dump and oversees the school, making sure that the monsters are accomplishing their monster tasks, as he heavily judges them based on how they perform, being able to see the scares that they do. But why do the monsters need to scare humans? What's their motivation? Simple, they basically survive off the fear of humans. In the show, there is this pool of elders, something that can actually speak to a few monsters directly, but it serves as life itself for the monsters, a place that breeds the continuation of monsters existing that is fueled by the fear in the belief in monsters, not necessarily confirming they are real, I'll get into that in a second, but when humans emit fear, it's that belief in thinking they are real which translates into your mind is what makes these fears real. Here, it's just materialized into actual monsters. If the fear dries up, so does the pool itself, resulting in the monsters literally disappearing, vanishing from the world. So for a viable reason, it's a solid bit of lore that makes the nonsensical make sense. On the other hand of not being captured and monsters fully being exposed to everyone in a non-scary way, all the monsters in general have to constantly deal with Simon, voiced by Jim Belushi, who is dead set on proving that monsters are real and it's not just these personal, small, scary experiences that make you sound crazy when you tell others about your experience. While the show clearly had the surface level angle of scaring its audience through its visuals, the real themes the show displays between those moments is friendship, building three friends who have to work together to accomplish whatever they are tasked with doing, or in trying to fix what they messed up in doing. Each character has their own personal struggles that get brought out in the series, and for me, seeing a character like Ickis deal with his own anxieties and how his friends can be there for him to help him overcome them in certain situations is something I can relate to greatly, even more so today as an adult. So along with friendship, self-improvement and growing are also themes that you can find here, scattered throughout all of the seasons. But don't get me wrong, as dark, creepy, or even as wholesome as the show likes to present itself, it's also really funny. The running gag for monsters getting in trouble and being punished or threatened to be punished by the Snorch is fantastic. I mean, he doesn't seem so bad, he's dripped out, he looks pretty chill, but the threats of being tortured tortured by him have the monsters in school try their best to never have to live out those nightmares of being forced to listen to opera music, among other things. Having this companion named Zimbo that serves as his mouthpiece, who acts like a no-good hall monitor, to get others in trouble by reporting them. But even then, for the Snorch, he has his own character arcs that show he really isn't as menacing or mean as the show makes him out to be. He gets time to shine, coming out of his shell, showing a more compassionate side towards other monsters, and carrying a strict code that their job is to scare monsters, not harm them, even if provoked or tempted to do so. He's intelligent and a pretty cool side character that just proves that there is more that this show has to offer than what the base premise would have you think. The world of being under the dump or in the sewers gets built out to seem like it's tangible for the monsters to actually live in. They eat garbage, surf on running sewer water when toilets get flushed, they have their own monetary system built on toenails instead of money, they have their own holidays with one of them being a once a year shedding of their skin, which just makes things that much more unsettling. All of this to say that there felt like a lot of care in developing a real life for these monsters and how they live, what they learn through their studies and how they have to navigate the surface world for their scares. I commend the show for going as far as they did to accomplish this, and it's really thanks to the team behind the scenes where the writers, animators, and voice actors all worked in a collaborative way to really sell the world they built and the characters within it. And with as fun but equally as unsettling as the show can be, finding an audience and lasting for four seasons is pretty great. But what happened to the series in the end? Nickelodeon! <laughs> At the end of its four season run, that was it. There were no plans outright for another season of the show, and obviously the creators went on to continue with the Rugrats and plenty of other shows shortly after. To fully end things off though, there were some talks about making a theatrically released movie where all real monsters now can get as wild, dark, and creepy as it wanted. But at some point in its production, the plug was pulled, as it apparently would be too frightening for kids. Whether that's the actual reason or not, the show was officially over and lives on as this very memorable little 
slice of 90s Nickelodeon. I really enjoy the show for all the reasons that may sound wrong. It's gross, unapologetically gross, and I love that in the world they've created and that the characters we do have only make for the gross out moments to feel at home and not as weird or random as they would feel in other properties. The main three characters themselves have legit relatable traits that make them more than just the monster they are trained to be. They feel like a legit group of friends when they interact with one another, showing a level of care that makes for some genuine wholesome moments that drive a portion of the show that you may not have expected to see within a show about monsters. It does a good job at truly subverting your expectations. The series was at least initially popular enough to warrant a video game back in 1995, and since then make appearances in other Nickelodeon based video games and for animation, the show wouldn't be the last time we would see them, as they would have a fun little crossover cameo within an episode of the Rugrats called Ghost Story, marking the first time in Nickelodeon history there was a crossover between their cartoon properties, regardless if they both came from the same team making them. I actually have a video about that episode I made a while back, so if you want a little bit more spookiness for today, go check out that video. Revisiting this show again has brought back some incredible memories of watching it back when it was on TV, and surprisingly, it holds up really well, being an absolute treat to watch during this time of year. It certainly isn't my favorite show from Nickelodeon's 90s offerings, but it crafts a unique charm that you can't take your eyes off of. You may be turning on a show about monsters, but you'll soon find that there is more than just that blanketed in there. It can have scarier or creepier moments mainly thanks to its visuals, but there is a lot of laughs to be had, a lot of heartfelt genuine moments between the characters to experience, and overall, you might just find a love for a group of unsettling monsters that you didn't think you could have. Also, Crumb is there, and he still makes me feel uncomfortable, and that's why he's the best character. As a product of the 90s myself, it's a lot easier for me to have a lot of pre-built attachment to the shows that came out in that era. So to all my fellow 90s kids out there, as well as those who weren't, I'd love to know your thoughts on Ah Real Monsters. Did you enjoy it back then? Do you enjoy it now? Have you gone back to give it a shot? If you've never seen it, let me know in the comments. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.